For a long time, I have been interested in seismology and measuring earth movements and all that, and also meteorology. And I wanted to come up with a data logger that would be weatherproof, environment proof, that I could put somewhere, run it with solar, and get the data out of it. The problem with using like a straight Wi-Fi connection is when the Wi-Fi connection goes down, and they do go down frequently, is that you lose data. And I didn't want to lose data. So in an idealistic, perfect world, I would write it to an SD card and then use the Wi-Fi to transmit the data every once in a while from the SD card. And I looked around on the internet because I was sure somebody had done this before me. And yeah, no, they had not. I could not find anything that, uh, that actually worked. So my son was doing something where he could use something like this in school. And so we worked together and we put together something. And the applications, I mean, you could use it for, say, pollution monitoring, environmental monitoring, uh, looking at the structure of a building, checking the structure of a building, motion of the building, and so forth, or just security around a building, health checking uh, of employees or students or whatever in a building, uh, again, my passion, geology, seismology, volcanology, and meteorology. And of course, around farms, ranches, anything agricultural, there's a lot of opportunity for a remote monitoring. So these are all really good applications for this. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Again, uh, the hardware we're using is just this uh, uh, Wemos D1 with a, uh, an SD card and real-time clock shield attached to it, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's look at the uh, software. We'll do an example of how it operates, and yeah, so let's get moving. Let's do a demo of what we've got going on. You can see over here I'm connected to a, a server called Wemos D1R1, which is, of course is our uh, device, and when I enter in the magic um, IP address I will get this message that says it's uh, the IP is linked and add a slash get data to start uh, data transmission from our device slash and then get data which I've done before you can see and when I push this boom it empties out the contents of the SD card that is uh, over there on that uh, Wi-Fi device, and you can see that um, right, right uh, there at the end of my finger. It's sitting over near the TV. It's just plugged into the wall, and it's got a cord, and that's it. Here you can see I'm connected to it on the uh, on my tablet, and if I touch down here and select this, you can see where I've done the same thing and gotten the same exact data file. Um, yeah, so uh, this works uh, as long as you've got a web browser, it will send data to the web browser. And of course, then we can select all and then store that in a file. Let's do a demo from the server side, from the Wemo side. Let's uh, open the COM port. I will reach down here and reset it. There we go. So this is the IP address that one uses to connect to the server, which is the Wemos and it tells us that the server has started. It opens the SD card. This is the process of opening, and then this is the verification of opening. And then I will ask my assistant off-camera, assistant off-camera to connect, and we see that the file size that uh, is to be sent is 4455 bytes, and then the file size sent is 4455 bytes. Okay, so that's... Uh, what it looks like from the server side. Let's go over the software. This is obviously Arduino C. It's uh, for the Wemos D1 R1, and this is the information on compiling it. The program opens sends SD file data directly via the Wi-Fi to a connected client browser. And we have attached a micro SD shield these are the pins I am using. So for MISO, it's GPIO 12. For MOSI, it's uh, 13. For CLOCK, it's 14. And for the SELECT, CHIP SELECT, it's 15. So uh, the SD library uses 8.3 file names. They're not case sensitive. And uh, down here is the real-time CLOCK, which we're not using. I won't go over that. And then here's a load cell, which is the 
project I'm working on. I want to connect a load cell so I can make a seismometer out of this. And uh, okay, down here is the SD library. So that is for the uh, SD card. SPI is the serial library. We include that. Of course, we need the Wi-Fi and the web server libraries. The constant character, this is the SSID. This is, so this is the thing we saw both on the laptop and the uh, tablet when we connected. This was the thing we were looking for, the SSID. And our password was 12345678. Of course, you would assign that and hopefully something more clever. Uh, then this is a variable for the data file name. And this is the SD card file name. And I, I just used uh, this date, um, but nothing special about that. You can change it to whatever uh, according to the 8.3 names. Let's scroll down. The IP address, this is uh, what the client connects using. So it's 10.10.10.1. And then the gateway, likewise. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And then this is the port 80. We're going to use port 80, which is just uh, standard internet. So the first routine is handle root. And this is the, the first call uh, from the client. And what we do is we send them text HTML. And this was the message we saw up at the top where it said IP linked add slash get data, get data to URL to start the transfer. So we saw that. Uh, this was not used. I didn't demonstrate this, but this is in case uh, something is not found. It does, does a 404 like you've seen on the internet. Okay, moving down. This is the open the SD card. And I have another video on how to do this in detail. But uh, what this does is it, it does a print line, a blank line, and then it tells that you're opening the SD card. And if it's not successful, then it prints out the message SD card failed and does a return. And if it is successful, then it prints SD card open as we saw over here. Okay. Scroll down. This is the uh, routine that reads the SD card files. So it is just open read file and then a data file takes on the value of sd.open. This is the file name, the date that I used, and then the mode is file read. This is our get data routine and this is where we, as it says, we go get the, uh, the data out of the file. So the first thing we do is we open read file, which we did right here. Uh, we get the size of the file by making this call. We print out this header, which we saw right there, and then followed by the file size. Then we, uh, we uh, go ahead and send header information to the client, both of these lines, and this sets the cache time that it will stay in the, uh, in the browser and for 30 days. Then we uh, get the information on file size sent we print the label right here, file size sent, and then the variable there. Then we close the data file, which flushes the buffer, which makes sure we have all of the data sent. We delay for 100 milliseconds. And yeah, so that's this routine. The next one is the setup routine. And we open the serial port. We print connecting to network. We do the thing with the SSID and password. Uh, we do the uh, Wi-Fi soft AP config, so that's the IP address, the gateway, and subnet, so we configure all that. Delay by 150 milliseconds, uh, SSID connected, and then serial print line. So uh, that's a user message. And then local IP address, uh, Wi-Fi soft AP IP and server on. So when there's a slash, it does handle root. That's the first call typically from the client. Then we have a slash get data. And as we saw, that's what triggers the uh, file dump from the SD card to the client. Uh, not found, again, this is if uh, something is not found, it does the 404. And then we uh, initiate the uh, server. Uh, and then the last one is the HTTP server started, which is that. 
and then we do the open SD card. So that was the routine we looked at earlier. So that's it for the setup. And then the last thing is just an infinite loop where we keep looking to handle the client. We look, keep looking for uh, client calls and that's it for the software. Well, that's it for my simple data logging, data transfer routine. Whether you're doing pollution monitoring, environment, structural monitoring, health, geology, seismology, meteorology, ranching, farming, whatever it is you're monitoring and data logging, I hope you found this useful and interesting.